Welcome to Kodu Game Lab Project 3 Part 4 of Yellow Brick Road. In this tutorial, you will be adding additional objects to move the plot of the story along. The programming pages you are about to create will point the character in the correct direction to complete the goal, which is getting Kodu home from his nightmare. You will also learn how timing is everything. I'm going to click resume to go back to editing my game. I'm going to click escape so that I'm able to edit. We left off with the balloon giving Kodu a message about collecting coins. So now I'm going to create the object that creates the coins for Kodu. So I'm going to go over here on my screen, select the object tool. And I'm going to add a rock. So I'm going to program him that when he does not see the stick, so after the stick has vanished, I want it to switch pages, so I'm going to change its coding. I'm going to go ahead to page two for this rock, and I'm going to tell it to randomly every five seconds. So somewhere between five seconds, create a coin. So action, create, and we want it to create that coin for Kodu. I'm also going to add a timer to this so that after 50 seconds, so 30 and 20, that it's going to vanish this rock. Your combat, vanish, and we want it to vanish me, so that it will stop producing those coins. Now we're going to escape, and we have to enable Kodu to actually collect these coins. So I'm going to go to program. I'm going to go to line five, and I'm going to say that when Kodu not see the stick. Um, switch to page two. I'm going to indent this line. So first I want him to not see the stick and then I want him to switch his behavior. I'm going to now copy the first two lines of code from page one and paste them onto page two using that shortcut feature and then right clicking. On the third line, of the second page for Kodu, I'm going to program that when it bumps into the coin, it's going to score, so that's in the game, positive points, it's going to be two points per coin, and I'm also going to say those are for white points. In addition, so I'm going to have to indent this fourth line. When it bumps into those coins, I'm going to have the coins disappear. So it's going to vanish. It. On line number five, I'm now going to add that when it sees fly fish, which we will be adding, that 
I do is I'm going to switch to page three. And escape to go back to my editing mode. I want to place the fly fish right after that second curve. So he's out of view from when Kodu starts the game. Select my object tool. I'm going to add that fish. Fly fish. And then on the first line of page one, I'm going to add that when he sees Kodu, and I'm going to be more specific, and I'm going to say close by. He's going to say something. That's under actions. So the fish's message is going to let Kodu know that he is also an ally kind of give him an idea that he's going to need his coins and that the cyclists are ahead. I've also added some additional keyboarding commands to change the camera view for Kodu, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. I'm going to make sure that this message also goes full screen and click save. On the second line, I'm also going to add that when it sees Kodu, it's going to switch to page two of the code. And I'm going to indent this. Now I'm going to escape and I'm going to go back to Kodu and I'm going to add those keyboard commands. So I'm going to go to program. I'm going to copy and paste the first row of the programming for page three. So I'm going to copy and then I'm going to go to page three and I'm going to paste it. On line two, I'm going to add that when the keyboard uses the letter D, so it's going to be under letters, that the camera, so that's under view, is going to follow Kodu. So give more of an aerial view. On line three, I'm also going to add that if we use the keyboard with the letter S, this time I have to go a little bit further into the letters, S, that it's going to follow Kodu in that first person, again through Kodu's eyes. I'm going to return to the fly fish programming. And on page two of the programming, I'm gonna add that when he sees Kodu, He is going to turn, and he's going to turn towards him. And he's going to do it slowly, and I'm actually going to add two slowlies. So this will make it slower than just having one slow. Then on the second line, I'm going to indent this. But also, when he sees Kodu, he's going to play a sound. So that's under Actions. I'm going to go to Play and expand on that. And I'm going to click Ocean. And I'm also going to add that I only want to play that once. This music will prompt the change in behavior for the balloon and also set the tone for the fish. So what I need to do now is I want to go back to the balloon. And 
and I'm going to add some programming to the menu. I'm going to copy the first line of code, and um, we are working on page three now. So I'm going to paste it. On the second line, I'm going to add that when he hears the sound of the ocean, I want a timer to start. I'm going to go to my third line. I'm going to add 10 seconds. Indent this line so that he hears it and then a timer begins, and then after that timer ends, he's going to say his next message to Kodu. So the balloon is going to give Kodu another warning about the cyclist. I'm gonna make sure that I have it coming up in full screen. Hit save, and I'm also going to add that I only want the balloon to say this once to go do. In the last line for page three, I'm going to add that it's also going to switch to page four. And I'm going to indent this under line three so that it happens after he gives the message to go do. Now I'm going to go to the top of my code for page three, and I'm going to copy the first row again and put it on the first line for page four. Second line, I'm going to add that when the balloon sees the hut or Kodu's home in this game, when he sees it close by, and I'm also going to add that it will be below him. That I want the balloon to give Kodu another message. So the balloon is going to reassure Kodu that he's almost home and to keep on following the yellow brick road. Click full screen, and again, I'm going to have that message just once. Now I'm going to escape, and I'm going to go to the hut. Tell me to use my camera tool, and then back to my object tool to get to the programming for the hut. On the third programming line for the hut, I'm going to add that I want it to switch to page two. And I'm going to indent this so that it happens after the message. Now I'm going to go to page two for the hut. And I'm going to say that when Kodu's score is above and I'm just going to say zero points. And remember those were white points. So right now the cyclists take away points and the coins gave him points. And if this occurs, then Kodu wins the game. The last piece of the game includes adding a timer so that if he doesn't do this successfully before a certain amount of time, the game will end. So I'm going to escape, and I'm going to add just a random object that can be programmed as my timer. I'm going to add a tree. I'm going to program that tree that after 
about three minutes. So timer. Eighty seconds. The game will end. I hope this tutorial has been helpful in understanding how to add additional objects to move the plot of your story along, as well as programming pages to point your character in the correct direction. In this case, getting Koju home from his nightmare. You'll also learn that timing is everything. 